All right, so it's time for your first bifocal lenses. First time needing help up close. You can't see things right here anymore. If you're watching this on your phone, that's an interesting proposition and problem. So listen close and don't worry about the watching so much. I'm not going to show you anything that's going to just make it instantly what it is. So let's get into it and let's have some fun today, shall we? So for starters, goodness knows there's nothing particularly fun about getting into bifocal lenses, except maybe if you love to research things like me and then you've got something new to study and try to figure out. And then it's a little bit fun at least because there's tons of options, there's tons of different things. It's probably a bit overwhelming and that's why I'm here. We've talked about a few different things with bifocals and progressives in the past, but this is gonna be strictly focused on you just found out you need some sort of bifocal and now you've got to do something so you can see right here or here or to that area there. Otherwise, everything's just fuzzy anymore, except for way out there with glasses on. Let's specify that first. So, of course, there's always reading glasses. There's always multiple types of lenses and ways to get there. But today we are specifically going to focus on exactly what it sounds like, the bifocal, which two focal lengths, your distance power up here, your near power right there, and if you look at the focal point right in that little D segment, you can see that magnification changes right there. Give them the D right here, there you go. I did not say that out loud on video. And then the progressive lenses, and I'm showing this upside down because it just works better on camera in this case. So you can see the distortion of my face better that way. That's just the way it works. Don't ask me, I don't understand camera physics at all. Actually I do, and that's why I've got this up here way up close. This is your modern ish, modern ish. This one's really old. This is your modern progressive lens where the power at the distance is what you need for the distance. It gradually changes from this point right here, which should be, if all is done correct, right in front of the pupil on either side of the glasses. And that gradually increases in power as you get through here, and that's why you have this little bubble all around through here to your near zone, which would be comparable to what's right here. Right off the bat, if you're able to see the video and you're looking at it, you can tell the magnification area is much larger there versus over here, where it is just that little bit. And this isn't fair because it gets larger as it goes down, just the nature of the design of this particular one. Again, this is a little bit older progressive, so maybe not the best example in the world of how all this works. And we're gonna keep out of one here. No. That's enough of that. But that is kind of the basics of the two options, the very most basic options. Again, as I said, there are tons of different lenses out there. But what you want to decide to start with is whether you want the line there or not. That's the uh, ultimate Kickstarter. Most people say they don't want the bifocal just because there's a line there. We don't want people seeing it. And I'm already getting older, which is why you need bifocals. And, Love it or hate it, that's part of it. So many people get stuck up on that stigma that they never get the darn things even though they need them. I mean, personally, I'm in the camp of get them as soon as you can because they're easier to get used to and they're easier to learn to use earlier. The flat bifocal has some advantages, of course, because again, as I mentioned, the zone for near is much closer. The disadvantage here is you only have that near zone. When the powers are lower, that's okay because that mirror zone is going to give you a pretty good range. If you're talking about a 1 to a 150 ad power, this isn't going to be strictly that 12, 16 inch range. You're going to be more 16, 20, 30 inches and beyond pretty easily. But once you cross that 2 ad power, everything changes here and here. With the progressives, that zone pinches down. Now, on to the progressives. In particular, the advantage with these is it's progressive. There is no hard zone 
For distance, there's no hard specific zone for near. It gradually changes from that distance to near. So you've got a little bit of everything, and especially as you get into stronger powers, that does have the obvious advantage of giving that easy arm's length zone, which is where you guys are for me. So that's a thing to consider. The problem, and why I have to pause to say problem, is there's a lot of distortion in these. That's just the nature. You have to blend the curves from that distance zone here to that near zone here and to create hopefully a little area here that works at arm's length. Progressive designs are all over the map, but for the most part, you're gonna have 0% add here, 0% here, and then it's gonna go quickly from there. Am I looking at that right on this one? Yeah. So you've got this little four millimeter zone difference between here and here before the add power starts to increase. From here up, you've got about a 14 millimeter section of where the power gradually increases, but that's not totally true. It's going to ramp up pretty quickly here in the first bar, uh, the natural, you know it's been a long time since I worked with the SLR natural, so it's a little tough to say. They've revised the darn Verilux Comfort that used to be the companion lens to this so many times. I don't know which version of this we're on anymore, if the natural even still is based on any sort of comfort, but that's another story. So, you know, you're gonna have some change in power through here to where it's gonna ramp up to about 40% and 60% of your ad power in different zones here before you get to that 80 to 100% down here. And that 100%, of course, is where your full power is gonna be at. You can cheat a magnification of the beard. Yeah, right there. That's how progressives work. As far as actually wearing and getting used to them, well, that's a whole other video, and we'll throw that card up here because goodness knows you need it if you're going that direction. Bifocals aren't anything super insane to get used to. It's there, it's not there, and it's there. And that's really all there is to say there. I mean, it's pretty intuitive. That line is typically set about eight millimeters below the center of the pupil, 6K, 6 in some cases, some cases farther down. It does depend a little bit on the attitude at which you hold your head. A good optician is gonna pick up on that and fit it a little bit differently. For you tall guys out there, I certainly am not one, but what happens a lot of times is that gets set up too high, either by the optician being way shorter than you and parallax error coming into play, and it's too high. Same thing happens in progressive lenses, but you'll notice it more in the bifocal because you don't have that extra two millimeters of play for it to be in the right spot. What happens then though is you have the, <laughs> pretty much your whole world you have to interact with if you're significantly taller than the rest of the population it is now blurred unless they're right here. That's fun, right? Progressive of course don't have that problem. Short people don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm done, that's it, I'm broken. Bifocal versus progressive. Which would you wear? For me, it's more exactly how you're using the lens that matters. For that first pair, when you're at a one or a 150, you know, it's, it's not gonna make a significant difference except for the fact that you have that physical line there. There's a little bit of image jump between the two, which you'll see right there as we move this up. You'll see that pops up just a little bit sooner, but you get that magnification. So that one is a little bit different space. With this, uh, there we go. You don't get any sort of an image jump. It's continuous from top to bottom. There is something in between these called a digital ad lens. Talked about that in another video recently. I will link to that one in the cards here as well because that's another one that deserves its own video. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you didn't, cuss at me down in the comments below. It's fine, I'm used to it, it happens. Yep, that's the key to sign off. I'll catch you guys next time. Let me know if this helped you in particular, how it helped you so I know how to formulate future videos. And if you hated it, it's okay. Tell me, we'll do another one. It happens. That's how I keep doing this. Redo the video 10 different ways. I'll see you guys next time.